Hello beautiful people on YouTube. Always been the kind of girl that hid my face So afraid to tell the world what I've got to say But I have this dream right inside of me I'm gonna let it show It's time to let you know It's so that you know This is real, this is me I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be now Gonna let the light Thank you for all those that have been following, subscribing. Um, I'm so excited. I tried to make a goal of hitting about 150 subscribers by the end of the spring. And I know that's kind of slow growing because you see some YouTubers that skyrocket overnight. But for me, I kind of don't post as regularly as I should. I know you guys have noticed that. <laughs> trying to get better. But how do you like this lighting? So I keep improving the lighting for you guys. I really enjoy what I do. Um, I'm not doing it to be famous. Um, I just really enjoy sharing my life. It's therapy for me. And I really love that all of you guys reach out to me and tell me, um, ask me questions, tell me about how you saw something that helped you. It helps me guide where my channel is gonna go. So my channel has always been about me and my family and all of our mini adventures. Um, because I now live in Arizona, it's gonna be more geared towards that, but I know there's a ton of Arizona videos out there, so it's more about my experience. So here we go. So first things first, let me take this thing off. Excuse, guys. Hair's a mess, but my curls, they're, they're growing a little bit. They're kind of matted right now, because I had that head covering on but I love it I'm loving these curls guys loving these curls so first things first I wanted to update you it has been six months since I moved to Arizona six months guys and um, I know a lot of you have had questions about racism and things like that so I wanted to touch on that and just kind of give you an update so first things first from the last video that you guys saw, Trevor was in the process of moving here. He has since moved here, and he lives about 20 minutes away from us in Surprise. Um, I know I've done a video briefly about um, house hunting in Surprise. I'm actually gonna do that more because there are some beautiful houses right now that I've been touring in Surprise, and I'd like to show you guys. Surprise is kind of the up and coming suburb in the west side of the valley. It's still a good 40, minutes to the east side like Scottsdale and everything so that brings me to my first point where to pick to move so now that I've been here for six months I kind of have a better idea of what advice I would have liked if it had been me asking this question before so a lot of people said should it be based on schools should it be based on work yes all of the above but I think first and foremost here in Arizona, it's so important to think about what your lifestyle is going to be. So I feel like the west side is quiet, suburban, um, more sprawled out, and, and there's not a lot of nightlife there, not a lot of one-off restaurants, it's more chains. You may be able to find one thing here or there, but for the most part, that's not the way it is. But you can definitely live on the west side and never have to go on the east side. So if you are a family person, um, maybe you're just someone that doesn't party or really go out or care about dining out as much. Maybe you just like nature more and quiet and country life. The west side or just really, really suburban life, west side for sure. And there are some decent school districts out there. Out here, I should say. I am in the west side right now. However, that being said, if you're like me, who's kind of realized with my kids, we're very active. We like to try different things out in the city. 
Um, we like to try different foods. We like to, I like to go out once in a blue moon, probably, I don't know, at least once a month. But sometimes, um, like right now, because I don't know anyone really, I've made a couple friends here, but I want to meet more people and go do more things and explore um, nightlife. And to do that is all on the east side. Here in Arizona, there is a zero tolerance with drinking and driving. Now, I have never been the type to drink and drive and never had a DUI, but um, that being said, here, you can't just blow a certain percentage or less like you can in other states. Here, I've been told, correct me if I'm wrong, if you're from Arizona, no, but if you blow anything at all, you go to jail. And so they have zero tolerance. So that kind of deters people from even having one or two drinks and waiting it out for a while. Um, you kind of don't want to have anything in your system. And a lot of things, festivals and things, not that everything's about drinking, but I do like to try wines and some fun drinks here and there. And you can't drink anything if you're going to be driving. So you either spend the money to stay in a hotel on the east side, because I don't really know anybody, um, or you stay with someone on the east side, or you just don't drink at all and you come home on the west. So initially I liked the west side because I was thinking I like to do things and go out, but that's not my every week or every day thing. So I wanted to be able to do things, but then at the end of the day, go home where it's quiet, peaceful. My area is so peaceful that I could literally, have you guys seen in the notebook that scene where they're like laying in the street? And no cars are coming. Let me, that is exactly how my area is. I could lay in the street in the middle of the night and it would take a while before a car came through. So I like the peace, I like the quiet. And my neighbors have been amazing, amazing. I've had several people bring over cookies. I've had several people bring over cakes. I've had people invite us for dinner. I've had people um, had people help me with my kids once in a while um, that are in the area when I had to work a little later. I have had lots of people ask for playdates for my kids. So my kids have been able to find friends fairly easily. So I feel like the community that I live in, which again is Verado, is really awesome, but it is kind of like the Midwest in the Southwest. Everybody from the Midwest, I feel like, relocated here. So a lot of people have that same culture. Whereas the East Side is not gonna be like that at all. You're not gonna, from what I've heard, I can't say because I haven't lived there yet, but um, everybody that I've met that lives over there has, or is native to Arizona said that um, it might happen in pockets, but as a whole, that's not how the community feels on the East Side. It's very private is what you want to say. Um, I'm sure they have a good sense of community as well, but it's just not the same feel as Verado. The next thing I want to say is the east side, for instance, I'm considering moving there because my kids got into um, some charter schools. So that's one thing you can do is look into charter schools, but if you do it, make sure you apply like in the early winter previous to the school year that they're going to start next year. So this past winter I actually applied for fall of 2020. So it would have been like nine months earlier. Um, they usually announce if the child or your children got in around February. So um, I had actually applied to some schools here. One is called Legacy. It's supposed to be a really good charter school. You'll have to really look these up because I'm not super familiar with how great they are um, besides the small tours that I've done. So Legacy, I heard is a really good school. They're very traditional, desks facing forward. Um, they go in uniforms, very traditional, but I hear that the it's, it's fairly good. I feel like I don't necessarily believe in always traditional learning, so that one was a little eh for me. And then I um, applied for basis schools for them on the west side, as well as the east side. The west side, the waiting list was ridiculous. Um, the east side, they actually got in. 
And Basis is an amazing school. Um, they are rated, I believe, number one right now in all of Arizona. And there are several Basis schools throughout the valley on the east and west side. But like I said, the west side was full. But their curriculum is so awesome that in elementary school, they teach Mandarin until fourth grade because they realize that kids have more of an artistic brain at that age and they want to foster that. And then fifth and sixth grade, they teach Latin because that's the root of Spanish, English, French, and German, I believe. So um, they teach those for two years. And then in seventh grade, the kids can choose if they want to stick with English or they want to do Spanish, French, or Mandarin all over again, so or further, I should say. So I thought that was really awesome. Another thing is they do engineering class from pretty much kindergarten, just to kind of introduce different concepts and ways of thinking and learning, which I really liked. Another thing they do is, in high school, it's pretty rigorous. Now that's the one thing about basis schools that I'm not so sure. I'm really also a firm believer that kids should be kids. And it's pretty a pretty rigorous um, curriculum. So they actually are always kind of a year ahead. So by high school, they graduate in 11th grade, but they have 100% college placement, but they graduate in 11th grade. That's insane. Um, that just shows you how hard their curriculum really is. So they got into those schools. They seem amazing. I'm just a little hesitant on doing that in my son's school career so late in life because he is going to be going into 10th grade so I'm not sure so much about with him but um, Basis is an awesome school. Another thing that they got into on the west side is Paradise Honors schools in Surprise. So that is another option I'm considering. Um, that I hear I have not actually had a school tour on that one so that is going to be an update I have to follow up on you with you guys but um, they're very highly rated and the kids got into the elementary and the high school so um, that was another deciding factor for me if I put one in charter I wanted them all to be preferably in the same charter community so they could have the same days off and things like that whatever but um, it's supposed to be a really good school, highly rated, and I hear that the curriculum is not so rigorous. It's more based on what grade they are in already, but they have, they're have they very highly rated. So, But outside of charter schools, there are some public schools, just regular public schools, that have really um, decent ratings as well. And you have to realize ratings don't really mean everything. It's really based on how the families at home first and foremost, um, how involved the parents are. Also, what are the teachers like? Teachers to me are everything. So for me, it's a lot more than just the ratings. So I really recommend going and getting a tour, asking lots of questions, maybe even having questions before you go on the tour um, to get a real feel for what school works best for you and your family. So we'll go on to the next topic. Okay, so on the east side, I also noticed that like for science camps and things like that, science classes, they, all have, they have really cool extracurricular. Whereas in Verado, the extracurricular is pretty slim. And when I do before and after school care, if you have young ones, um, it closes during the holidays. So kids have tons, not just holidays, I'm talking teachers conferences, every little thing that the school closes down, the before and after school closes. Now that's different from places I've lived previous, Minnesota and Florida, places that we've been to. If the school was closed, it didn't necessarily mean that the uh, before and after school care was closed. So it really helped and worked with your work schedule. I wish I had known that before I moved to Verado. Verado's not like that. So we, we really don't have before um, and after school care when the schools close, and that's tons of days. So a lot of stay-at-home moms or dads live up here with a working uh, partner, and that works great. But it's really hard if you both work or if you're a single parent with kids. Uh, it can really hurt. Um, the east side, on the other hand, I've seen a lot of extracurricular options and things offered. Now, I'm not sure about their before and after school care, but one thing in particular that I really enjoyed was the Science Center has a teen night 
they have a night where it's free, but you have to register ahead of time, and they'll cater things like Whataburger and other things, and it's just teens, and you drop them off from six to like nine or 10, I believe. Um, and it's, it's supposed to be really fun and educational. I've tried to sign my son up for that, but let me tell you what it would take. <laughs> so where we are, to get on the other side of the town by 6 p.m., which is prime rush hour time, uh, it would probably take us about an hour, if not more. So I'm talking pack up the kids, leave at five to get there by six, maybe even sooner, drop him off, and then turn around, which how are we gonna get dinner? Or we could eat out there, but either way, turn around, drive another hour back with the girls, wait until about nine o'clock, get back in the car, drive another hour, maybe 45 minutes to pick him up, and then turn around and do it back. So that's almost four hours of driving, just so that he can have that cool experience at the Science Center. And there's a lot of things that are downtown or on the east side of town for kids to do. Um, but again, if it's during the week, uh, that's kind of the issue I'm running into. Also, all of the cool STEM camps and other camps that you're thinking that would be um, the different, I, I don't know how to other way to say it, I guess, but um, not the traditional, like fun different camps are all usually on the east side or at least available further on the east side. Things are changing on the west side, don't get me wrong, because they keep developing more things here and as it, it expands and as it grows, there are more things that are coming here, but as of now, it's really hard. So that is the reason because of the schools, uh, extracurricular activities, the fact that I would like to go meet people and have some fun once in a while, and that's all on the east side. I can't even really Uber. It would cost me about $70 to Uber one way. So there you go. So that's why as much as I love the west side, kind of feel like being where I am currently in life, I need to be on the east side. So you really just have to think about where you are in life, what you want, um, to determine what part of side, what side of town to live in. Now that's just my, that's just my opinion. It's my opinion! <laughs> okay. So another thing I wanted to touch on, okay, so racism on the west side. Going to the grocery store, play dates, running into people at the stores, in my neighborhood, I have not personally experienced anything. People have been so kind and welcoming. However, after almost six months, my, my son actually admitted to me that he's experienced some in the environment in the high school. So here's the examples of things he's experienced. So he said that there are a lot of primarily Mexican and white kids, which that's normal in Arizona, but they like to use the N-word. Now I tried to explain to him that they're hearing this on, in music, on TV, and I don't like it personally, no matter who says it. It doesn't matter what your color is, um, because this is what happens. There's kids that hear this of all races and they think it's cool and they emulate it because they're emulating their, their idols. And, um, but they know that it's not okay to say in front of someone of color. So that's where I know they're not completely ignorant. So they will use that word a lot with each other. And one time they turned around to my son and they said, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't realize you were there. Does that offend you? And I guess he said on his own, yeah, I don't really like it. And they said, okay, I'm sorry. And then a few minutes later, they were using it again and kept turning around saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So it kind of made him feel A, disrespected, but also B, uh, outcast and odd. He felt awkward. He didn't know what to do in the situation. Uh, another thing that's happened is there was one kid in particular, which uh, this is one child, but I guess he likes to cause controversy. So he was friends with my son for a while and he is also Caucasian or white, um, but he 
wants to be like him, he said. So he copies a lot of things my son does, but he's also trying to use the N-word, not to my son, but in other in instances, even though he knows it makes my son uncomfortable. Um, he has been caught on the bus saying, just randomly, out loud, build the wall, because he knows a lot of kids are Mexican on the bus. Um, so my son has distanced himself from that person in particular. Um, he's realized what's a good friend and what's not a good friend. So I'm very proud of him for making his own informed decisions. He didn't feel comfortable with that particular person. Um, other instances he's had is he said he was in class and there's been a group of white kids that have turned around and said, do you like Kool-Aid? Do you like watermelon? And my son turned around and said, well, Yes, but I also like other things and he felt very uncomfortable and I said you know that is really a, a shame um, that people are having ig ignorant comments like that but not just to him he said he's noticed a lot of white and Mexicans clash so he heard um, one kid say to a Mexican child um, go pick cotton so if you don't know anything about Arizona this is a big agricultural state when it comes to cotton and um, there's other crops that they've had. I'm still learning it myself. Um, but cotton is huge. You see cotton all over the place here and I guess it used to be a lot bigger before they started developing so much. So um, as you know, a lot of uh, Mexican families and other families um, have done a lot of labor work here and that doesn't mean everybody. <laughs> but unfortunately that stereotype holds and that was something very offensive that he said to this Mexican kid. Some kid randomly said to him, um, why don't you go pick some cotton? And my son felt very uncomfortable hearing that. He didn't like it. He was upset about it. He also has a friend who he is Filipino and his dad is a police officer and I guess one kid had came up to both of them, my son and this Filipino friend, and said you should watch out for his dad. His dad could be a racist and hurt you. You know, why would you say that? So to me it seems like there's a lot of kids that are out in the west side that either grew up in these small tiny little towns around here or have come from the Midwest and they've been in a bubble and they don't, they're not taught what's right and what's wrong uh, to say to someone of color. So there's a lot of disconnect. Um, I, I don't know if you want to call it insensitivity. So that's the kind of things he said and so he said he would be willing to move closer to the city because Maybe then people will be more exposed to other races, which is true. On the east side, there's a lot more of uh, diversity, but it's still Arizona. It's not super diverse yet, but things are changing. People are moving here every day. My son, just to make clear to my son, that he doesn't experience that every day, but it has, it, but it has been happening and he has heard it periodically since this uh, ugh, since the start of the school year. So that's that. My younger daughter and her elementary school has not had any issues like that and she's made some great friends. My son also has made some good friends. I don't want to make it seem like he's an outcast in high school. He's made some good friends but just wanted to speak to what you guys were asking about in racism. So that is what his experience was in high school on the west side, um, but he does have some good friends and the teachers have been great. Uh, now for elementary school, love the, the staff. The staff has been amazing and my daughter's had nothing but positive experiences. She's met a lot of great friends. And for the preschool that my littlest one goes to, she's also made a lot of good friends so far, but they're preschool. So we've been going to a lot of birthday parties and just, uh, yeah, like I said, a lot of play dates. Okay, so when we wanna talk about how the workplace is. So right now, I am doing very well at work. However, there are a couple things, or there is something huge going on right now. Um, that I could no longer keep quiet and had to have 
bring it and escalate it. So it is currently being dealt with and investigated. And further in the future, I will be able to talk further about it. I just don't know who watches my channel and I don't want to reveal or talk about something confidential before a decision is made. Um, just know that I'm not in trouble. I did nothing wrong and I've done a really good job. So um, the workplace, uh, for the most part, I would say I have had nothing but great experiences. There's, um, and I'm sure this is just my experience and my place of work. This does not speak for all companies or how it's going to be all throughout Arizona. But I can tell you, I don't see a lot of people that look like me in upper management, uh, especially in corporate world here. So I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I. I just got here, but where I am, I do not see a lot. So stay tuned and I will update you guys on that in the future. My cookie business. So that has been going pretty well. Actually, I started where I gave out free samples uh, to the community out here and I've had a really good support system. I've had a lot of people ordering and a lot of people referring and it's just been really good. And I actually have now a coffee shop that is carrying my cookies that I fill every single week. So that's been fun and they're um, an awesome place. It's called Serafina. So if you ever wanna check it out when you're in Arizona um, in downtown Phoenix, hit up Serafina off of Jefferson. You can try one of my unicorn cookies. So please remember to also um, follow me on my Instagram, which is at Costia underscore girl. Um, on there, I post a lot of what I'm doing around town. I also sometimes do stories. I'm not as good as posting at, at posting on them every day, but I am trying to get better, and it is a lot more often than what you see on this channel. So for all of you guys that want to reach out or ask questions or just want to see what I'm doing, um, please follow me on Instagram because I have a lot of fun on there. So that is what I'm going to update you with. Oh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, that was stupid. Anyway, so um, my grad school. So my grad school, we are in week four, starting week five of ten. And for the past couple weeks, I had worked all the way up to week nine. So I've had 100% given to me in my papers, my discussions, and everything. So I would say grad school is going amazing. And that's kind of why my YouTube was lacking. Um, I am working full time. I am taking care of my three children. I am also doing this cookie business. And then last but not least, grad school, my grad school class. So I'm doing really well in it. I'm really happy. I am on my way. Um, but we will see. My goal is to someday, hopefully, um, transition out of corporate world. And it'll be one way or the other, whether it's cookies <laughs> or whether it's in counseling, which is what I'm going for. If you guys want to know anything further, too, about the counseling world or anything um, in regards to starting a business here, let me know um, because I can also do some videos on that. But yes, that is my current updates. I will have to do a video soon about dating here in Arizona. I dipped my toe. Okay, I, I can't. I can't hide it. I can't hide it. Okay. So I started dating a little bit here, just a little bit, a little bit. N nothing really to write home about. But when I'm on the apps and I'm swiping, I've been getting a lot of matches, which is, is pretty cool. And they look like all different types of people. Um, like I said here, primarily um, is white and, and Hispanic. So that has probably been the majority of who I've matched with, but I've also matched with a lot that look like me. So. That being said, I've gone on a few few dates. Um, a couple of them were eh. One of them took me to the art district downtown at night and we walked around and just kind of um, stopped into these cool little restaurants and these one-off shops. There's music playing throughout. Um, awesome, awesome thing. It was an awesome date night. We just were better friends. That's what I can say. He was, he was really cute. 
but I see him as a friend, so that was that. Um, the next one is someone that actually turned into one of my best friends here. He um, is not someone I necessarily see myself long term with, but he has helped me tremendously here. He's native here, and he has helped me with everything, everything from starting my business to um, suggestions on what to do with the kids, um, where to live. He's taken me on tours and places, given me different options and places to try at restaurants. Um, he's just, he's awesome. He's shown me different resorts here. People, instead of going out to like a club or just a bar, uh, a lot of people here go to really ritzy, expensive Scottsdale resorts. Now that was new for me. I've never lived in a place, even when I lived in Orlando, where there's a lot of resorts. Didn't live in a place where people hung out at the resort for fun, but here it's like, it is lit at these resorts. Like you go there, everybody's dressed up really beautiful. It's where you find a lot of professional type of people and they live here locally. They just are there having a drink. There's live music playing. Sometimes there's DJs. It's really fun. Great place to meet people, but I just haven't had the time because I live where? On the west side. <laughs> so I've only gone out a couple times, but um, that's always really fun here too. Um, so yeah, he's become one of my best friends. We're actually gonna probably go hiking here uh, later, but that was what came out of that. He would like more out of it, but I, I just, you guys, I'm just so busy. I don't think I have the time to put in the effort to really date like I should. And I have some other things to clean up in my personal life anyways before I feel like I'm really ready for a real relationship. So. Yes, I enjoy getting pretty and going out once in a while and being treated well. <laughs> Love meeting new people, but I think for a while I, I kind of want to focus on meeting people as friends and focusing on everything I have going on and getting to a good place where I feel confident enough, where I'm ready to really bring someone else into my life. Because right now I just, I just don't have the time with a business, work, kids, and grad school. So... Makes me kind of sad, but if I'm on the east side, at least I'll be able to like join a meetup group and go out for a day and then come in. Instead of when you're in a relationship, it really requires you talking a lot on the phone, meeting up with them often, possibly eventually moving in together or getting serious, and I'm just, I'm just not at that point right now. Um, one other date I had, um, he was also a very nice looking guy, uh, a lot younger. Well, I wouldn't say a lot. Well, like seven years younger. <laughs> That's another thing here is I've noticed that I've either been attracting guys that are like 30 years older than me or guys that are like eight years younger than me. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. But um, we went out, had a great time. He took me to the art museum and uh, we had so much fun. We also went to a spot at, where we could look out at the city at night and look at the twinkling stars and we listened to music and just hung out. That was so much fun. Um, again, I wasn't feeling anything more, um, but I had a great time. So I can't say I've had any crazy uh, dates or anything crazy happen yet. Um, and definitely as a woman of color, or someone that looks like me, I've been able to go out, meet people, um, and have fun. I just personally am not in a space to entertain a serious relationship at this time. But stay tuned, because I will let you guys know what's further happening in my life. So thanks for listening to this six month update. If you guys have more questions, like I said, put it in the comments below. Let me know, and um, we can talk. We can talk. <laughs> Oh, 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 I almost forgot. Right now we're in the midst of this like world pandemic going on called coronavirus. So I've been kind of in the house the past like three days and it's been insane guys. Here in Arizona, it's been crazy as well. We have um, grocery stores cleaned out. Um, schools have been canceled, although they're gonna be doing some online curriculum, basically. The schools have been canceled. It's crazy out here, guys. It's kind of scary. 
but thankfully living on the west side there's not really a lot of uh, traffic and things going on out here so I think I'm gonna take the girls for a walk or a hike in the mountains um, somewhere where there's fresh air and we're not in, conf in a confined space uh, but yeah that's that's kind of what's going on I've got some frozen veggies in case we need to bunker down I got a bunch of frozen veggies canned proteins like tuna and sardines and anchovies to go with rice and other stuff I'm gonna have lots of frozen meat already and not on purpose, but because I tend to hoard naturally when it comes to toiletries. Um, I've accidentally, like two months ago, bought way too much toilet paper. <laughs> and I forgot that I bought that much and bought another pack of toilet paper, just a normal size pack. And then all of a sudden we hear that everybody's going crazy the next week buying toilet paper. Thankfully, I already had a ton, but I did not purchase it during this, this big frenzy. So I'm glad that I didn't have to go fight or feel bad that I purchased a million rolls in one night. Um, that was just something I had built up over time. So I'm good on toilet paper and toiletries. So we're just going to try to ride it out and watch the news and not freak out too much. I mean, since the beginning of time, humans have always had crazy things happening and we seem to be pretty resilient. So just keep moving forward. You guys stay safe too. Um, I'm going to reach out to neighbors and other people to see if they need anything of what I have, if it gets down to that, but we're just taking it one day at a time like I'm sure you guys all are. I would love to hear your stories and comments below too of how you guys are doing with this coronavirus. What's happening in your state or where you are in Arizona? What, what are you doing and are, were you prepared? I mean, it's kind of a hard thing to be prepared for, um, so yeah. But thanks, and um, like, share, subscribe, and I will be updating you guys soon. I will actually be doing, trying to do more videos, like, like I said last time, right? Trying to do more videos, but we'll see where it goes, okay? Just be patient with me, guys. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and share. And for more video content like this, subscribe. Bye.